Welcome to the Cloudless Mind podcast about neuroscience, non-duality, and change management. Introducing your host, Paul Smith. Welcome to another podcast from the Cloudless Mind podcast series. Um, I'm sitting here uh, still with Aitya Zapora. We talked about creativity. Yes. The previous podcast. And uh, let's now dive into our brain a little bit more. Yes. Um, People think of themselves often as rational beings that make conscious choices. Right. And you as a neuroscientist, uh, what's your opinion about (laughs) that? (laughs) Yes. Well, that is also one of the biggest myths uh, that we have. And, And it is a very strong feeling that we have that we are the ones who make the choices of our actions and that we are rational but i think so uh, even in economy we know that we are we don't make rational choices we make choices based on um emotions and and sometimes we make choices and then in the end we say oh my god did did i do that so (laughs) yeah so, so we are not rational uh choice makers no no, that's, uh, that's the funny thing about neuromarketing, because they now know just yeah. with A-B testing and stuff. You trigger actually the unconscious part of the, the brain. Yes. And, and there the decision-making process is being started. And, and then afterwards, we become aware of the output. Exactly. So the work is done by the unconscious. And, and of course, this has to do with the fact that it's it's a much powerful engine. Uh, so uh, our conscious mind is very limited. It's yeah. just limited with, we call it the working memory, so that you and I are talking right now. What we're doing is, um, so you are asking me questions, and when I'm talking, you're listening to me. So my words are being perceived by you, heard by you, and you're processing that in your brain. So we are doing some information processing. And while we're doing that, it would be very hard to read a book and understand it at the same time. Or if somebody would be talking to us to also process that and understand that. So you also, you notice now that our conscious mind is so limited and we overestimate this every day. Yeah. So um, if we had to use our conscious mind to uh, make choices for us, we would have very limited um, power to do this. So what happens in reality is that we, um, uh, that for, the, for the people who have listened to the Creativity Podcast, we talked about um, uh, gathering information and, and uh, you know, having the weapons in your, in your unconscious. And um, so what happens is uh, there is information and experiences in your unconscious Mm -hmm. mind where you're not aware of every day. So the way you move your body, the way you uh, talk and and the languages that we speak, these are all automized by your brain. You don't think about them. Only when something goes wrong or you have to kind of divert from the plan, you can interfere, right? Um, But Most of the work is done, and when I say work, I'm talking about making decisions, is done uh, by the deeper levels of your brain, the unconscious. And what happens is you actually carry out this choice or this behavior, and you notice it in your conscious mind that you have done this. Now, some people, if you hear this, it's kind of radical because they'll say, no, I do have the feeling I decided in my head and I initiated. Yeah, true. And that's the amazing trick from the brain that it constantly creates the illusion, so to speak, uh, that it was your choice yes. being done by you. Exactly. And But if we look at how small our awareness is, there's this analogy like this whole room is totally black yes. and then your awareness is like a torch that can point at one thing at a time. Exactly. So what you are aware of is extremely limited. You can only focus at one thing at a time. Yes. So that's why multitasking with your conscious brain is impossible. That is that is actually impossible. So what we're actually doing is task switching. And it happens yeah. so quickly that we switch in between tasks um, that we don't notice that it's not a continuous activity. And um, with, that, with that focus is that... We focus on one thing at a time well, in this room you talked about. So I focus on that little plant and that's what I see the moment I look at it. Yes. But what happens is I am at this moment still 
perceiving the things around me because my unconscious mind is busy with filling that information with my prior knowledge. I know what a room looks like. I know what a table looks like. And I know how the walls, and I've just seen it when I walked in. So it, what it's doing is it's filling my conscious actually with prior knowledge that I know. Yeah. If you would ask me what color is... Um, the curtains behind me, well, I know I've seen them, but I'm not looking at it right now. I don't know. So yeah. it, it's all in the unconscious mind. But if you would show me two curtains and then and one of them is red, one of them is blue. Yeah. And I I just I wouldn't know why. And I'd say, Oh, but the yeah, I don't know. I'll just I'll just guess. Let let's say blue. Yeah. And it turns out ninety nine percent of the time <laughs> that it's blue because I know things in my in my unconscious. Yeah. So we underestimate the unconscious. It was funny. <laughs> I was in a, a, a clothing shop uh, this weekend, and I I think I was in there for forty minutes or so, and suddenly I realized that there was music playing, mm -hmm. and that was to me another such a clear example, like. You my unconscious brain it. would have noticed it and it has even influenced my mood most probably. Yes. But my 60 bits of awareness, they, no. they were busy looking at shirts and at, at jeans and stuff. Yes. And possibly if you walk out of the store and somebody asks you, just give me on, off the top of your head a song that yeah. you would come up with that song without even knowing why. Yeah. So that's what we actually do. Without knowing why, we um, make decisions and we show behavior. Mm -hmm. And I just said people would be a little bit shocked about what I just said. Well, we think we make the decisions. but um, and, and they do experience some sort of uh, decision moment and free will in their head. So yeah. that's what I hear all the time. Yes, mm -hmm. but you know... I really thought in my head, I am now going to move my hand from my left knee to my right knee. <laughs> I did it. I really did. So, yeah. uh, so this is this is kind of like their argument uh, of well, I do experience free will. Yeah. But I said nothing about experiencing free will because experiencing free will is something um, that we can do. Yeah. Because the brain generates a a feeling of free will and the funny thing is when we look at yeah that example of moving my hand from my left knee to my right knee that is uh, what we would call a motorical so, uh, movement yeah. uh, uh, um, an order of the brain and and the way that happens is that some neurons some some uh, uh, cells in your brain would fire and they would get activated to move uh, your hand because there are muscles yeah but the moment that the action starts in the brain, so when the cells start firing, mm -hmm. this moment is before the moment of the feeling that you get that you have made the decision. Yes. So the movement starts and a fraction of a second later, uh, in your brain, uh, you get the feeling of now I'm going to move my hand. And this is not uh, something you can observe as a person who's in it, yeah. but uh, neuroscientific uh, research has shown yeah. that we are not the initiators. We, as in uh, what we think we are. Yeah, we'll get to, to that later. <laughs> of, our, yeah, <laughs> of our behavior. There's this uh, great test they recently did on television. This, this lady, the presenter, could choose between two products constantly yes. on a computer. Mm -hmm. And she said, I'll pick the right one, I'll pick the left one. And the guy was just measuring her brain activity. And of course, beforehand, they already knew what she would choose, even before she was aware of making the choice. Okay. And But then it became <laughs> more funny, because afterwards, they asked her, yes. so why? Okay. Did, did always. you buy? And now oh, we, we always have answers, don't we? Yes. We always do. Well, you know, this is the timeline. We don't have uh, the timeline so um, uh, clear in our head, and that's where the illusion comes from. Yeah. We we get confused about who does what first. So you said the uh, the researchers knew before she chose because they would. I assume they could see yeah, in yeah. the activation in the mm -hmm. brain which choice she would make. So. Uh, before she even knew. So it's actually um, an activation that comes, we don't know from where, yeah. because who does the activation, we don't know, mm. or how, where, where that comes from, where that thought comes from. And afterwards, 
we get the feeling based on what the choice is. So yeah. we're not the person influencing the choice, but we get the feeling of, oh, now my brain chose right instead yes. of left. And then what happens is our new brain, so neocortex, takes over and that's our story maker. Yeah. So we need to live with that because we are people, we have roles in the world, we need to be able to explain everything that we do. And that's its job. So every choice that we make or our mind makes, yeah. we look at and we uh, fit a very good story to it. And we come up with explanations why we did that well i chose right because it was red and red is my favorite color yeah it's and and this is totally not right a yeah. shift in neuromarketing because before they would ask all the customers they do these surveys like mm -hmm. why did you buy this product what yes. did you think buying the product yeah and but you all get what we call cognitive dissonance in psychology yes people just create stories and explanations while they actually don't know yeah so it's more uh, it's smarter to just look at what people actually do, do exactly than, than what, what they, they say. say. I mean, mm -hmm. this funny example, um, many people in India, many women in India, yeah. they Google on, my husband wants me to breastfeed him. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> that, <laughs> I, that, I don't that, know where that, this example is going <laughs> to. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> And then uh, this yeah. researcher said, okay, so at Google, we know what they uh -huh. research. Yes. But if we would ask Indian men about oh. their biggest fantasies, they would not. They uh, would never come up with exactly. this. Exactly. So it, it's stuff that we actually make up to um, uh, justify our behavior. Because brain doesn't like discrepancy between belief yeah. and behavior. Yeah. We want to be consistent human beings and that is such a need yeah. that imagine you do something and the worst thing would be uh that you made a mistake so you, you all you want to do is um get your brain busy with finding the right explanation to justify your behavior because then yeah. you are right and if you recognize this inside your own head it becomes really funny because i <laughs> see my head of talking constantly like Finding explanations why before I did you even it. do things. I right? mean, uh, l last I went to Amsterdam and I was like, let's go by train, and then my brain switched. No, let's go by car. Uh, but when I said let's go by train, <laughs> the excuse maker in my head was like, yeah, because then I can work in the train and mm. it's easier and it's mm. faster. I don't no. have a traffic jam. And then when my brain switched to let's go by car, it's like, yeah, because then I can park sh next to the hotel yes. and it's probably faster. And if there's a traffic jam, doesn't worry because I can listen to podcasts. And so it's amazing <laughs> to see what's happening inside yes. your head. You yes, know? you have explanations for everything. And when the goal is justifying your own behavior, because your behavior is not determined by you. Yeah. You look at what you've done and you just try to come up with the right explanation to justify your behavior so that you're a consistent human being. Yeah. This is what everyone does in the evening when your neocortex is like tired yes. and it can't step on the brakes anymore. Yeah. Then for a moment, I have this in my show, like you hear this voice in your head like, I'm not going to eat chocolate tonight. <laughs> okay. And you're really convinced that <laughs> at some point you're just standing up, well, walking If you say to that to yourself place. three times, you're like, oh, yeah. you can almost <laughs> taste it. <laughs> But then when we sit on the couch eating chocolate, that's when the cognitive dissonance starts yes, again. Because you have to be a consistent human yeah. being, right? <laughs> yeah, but this is pure chocolate. Yes. And, and tomorrow <laughs> you're going to go uh, work out anyway. So actually you did a good thing because you felt so good about it and, and you want to be happy, right? So yeah, And then now it even shows that people who do sports yeah. are even, uh, even more likely to eat uh, uh, oh, food. So they the can couch. justify their bad yeah, behavior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but it's the other way around. Because uh -huh. uh, your brain can now tell you, yeah, I did sports yesterday, so this is mm. my excuse to eat stuff right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Such funny uh, beings. I know. I do that even before I do anything. So I, I start kind of having um, an introduction in my head. Imagine I'm sitting on the couch. This happens not very often, but sometimes. Yeah. That I think, um, imagine I just feel like a glass of wine. But I know, actually, I shouldn't because it's a Tuesday evening and I'm like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to work and everything. Before I even in my head um, think of the word wine, I say, well, I worked very hard today. Yeah. 
And um, well, you know what? I um, I need to relax. And well, tomorrow I don't have a very early meeting. Actually, it would help me to kind of pamper myself tonight and relax. And then before I know, I'm walking towards the <laughs> kitchen, yeah. and I'm thinking I'm doing such a great thing by grabbing wine right now. So true. So you even justify it before you do things. <laughs> Actually, per definition, um, if we ask people why they've done something, the yeah. chance is very high that you, they will come up with something that's not uh, correct. <laughs> true, true. And if, there is, uh, if people break up the relationship, if you ask both why this happened, mm -hmm. they will both come up with an excuse that it was the other <laughs> person's fault. Mm -hmm. People hardly ever blame them. So well, of course. <laughs> you know, they have to be consistent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So... What does this mean if we do not have free will, but we only experience free will? Yeah, this is really tricky. Some people think, well, you know, if I'm not the one making the choices, well, I might as well just not do anything. I'll just sit on the couch and let everything do everything. Yeah. But um, this is not a very productive and happy way of living because then, um, you know, you live in the world and you still experience um, free will yes. and you still Um, have the consequences of your behavior, whatever yeah. it might be. So it is uh, functional to recognize that what you do have consequences, but when you do something wrong or right, not to take them too seriously and beat yourself up about it, but just looking at them as, well, that's something I did. Now yeah. let's see what I can do now. Or like trying to detach yourself from the doer uh, towards the observer. Kind of like looking at your behavior as, okay, this person, Aicha, has done this. And obviously she had no other choice because obviously she's done this. Yeah. So not really taking yourself, not to beat yourself up about it and be, well, productive about the future. So not take it too seriously. Yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, true. It's it's uh, this is maybe the, the the hardest philosophical question ever. Yeah. Like people have like <laughs> bumped their heads into this for centuries. Yeah. So, in a way, it's a paradox. I think. Okay, okay, there is no free will. Okay, but there's the experience of free will. Exactly. So I always say, just act as if you have free will, because you can't do otherwise. Exactly. But then yeah. it's exactly what you said. But then if something goes differently from what you thought. Just know that this is how the universe moves. This is what happened, and yeah. that is reality. So, reality within the realm of the world. So, what has happened has happened, yeah. and and stop trying to um, put blame or beat yourself or other people about it. Because the way it happened, obviously is the way it happened and we yeah. cannot say anything else about it yeah beautiful thanks let's uh, end this podcast with this uh, <laughs> great conclusion let's move on to the next one